each one of you has suffered pain himself previously and possibly also has an interest in pain well this lecture will hopefully in the next couple of minutes update you on the interaction between vision and pain to show you that this is an exciting area of research and one that holds tremendous potential for innovating in the field of pain treatment, possibly also for innovating in exercise interventions for patients with chronic pain. This is research work done by Sana Kadan, who is uh, preparing her PhD on this topic. Margot de Koning has done some nice studies on this uh, in her recently completed PhD, as well as Lisbeth Tane, who has I included several studies on this in her PhD a couple of years ago and uh, this is uh, the, the work done by Sanneke Don is supervised co-supervised by Lennart Voigt and myself and Kelly Ikmans also is doing fascinating work in this area the fool you see in the right lower corner of your screen uh, is uh, me, I'm Joe Nace, and I will walk you through this lecture. I will start off not with a scientific study, but with a story, uh, an amazing story by someone who was working in his house and uh, he put his feet on a, a piece of wood and as you can see, the nail went through his Food. And this elicited a lot of pain initially and of course this was what he was uh, imagining that it uh, had occurred, that the nail went through his foot. So his buddies uh, took him to the nearby hospital where in the emergency department the emergency physician carefully uh, removed his shoe and also his socks and then they saw that he was very lucky because the nail didn't went uh, through his foot but in f instead the nail went in between his two toes and there was no tissue damage whatsoever and the pain uh, fastly decreased afterwards so this is a clear example of how you can feel pain without any tissue damage and also shows the, that vision has a important role in activating uh, your pain matrix because even without tissue damage but with a threatening type of visual input that can be enough for activating your pain matrix. Let's look at scientific observations done showing the close interaction between vision and pain. This is a very interesting study published last year and it uh, studied a series of uh, volunteers who were not suffering from any pain when they volunteered for this specific experiment. They were monitored throughout the study uh, for brain activity using functional MRI and they were shown a series of images, neutral images, implying that those images were not at all related to pain. So you see a couple of those images or possible neutral images uh, uh, on your screen. Some of those images, when they were shown to the participants, were paired with heat pain, implying that the participants, when they uh, watched uh, such a neutral images, they felt heat pain on their arm, because there was an electrode placed on top of the skin of one of their arms. Then, after watching those images, again, some of them being paired with heat pain, they were showing the same images again. But in the second uh, series of watching those uh, same images again, none of the pictures were paired with heat pain. So they were totally pain free during watching those pictures again. But they were again were monitored in real time continuously uh, with fMRI. And then the researchers find out that when they were watching the uh, neutral images the second time only when they were uh, watching the images that in the first series were paired with heat pain then they saw some uh, brain activation that can resemble activity that uh, has been observed previously in fMRI studies which relates to activity known as the brain circuitry of the pain matrix.
So this shows again that it goes very fast that you make these associations within your brain between certain visual input, even though the visual input is not threatening at all because the images were neutral, but when they were combined with the experience of pain, then neutral visual input can also be a factor responsible for eliciting pain uh, and producing pain by your brain. This is another fascinating study. This one is from Daniel Harvey, who, which uh, has done this uh, study together with Laura Mosley. And they put people with uh, chronic neck pain in a virtual reality setup. And they manipulated the visual input during head rotation movements. And what you can see is that in the green condition, they had three conditions. The, the normal condition is the blue condition and during the blue condition they just had visual input which is similar to the type of visual input that you have while uh, just moving your head to the, red, uh, to, to the right and to the left. In the red condition they uh, overestimated the neck movement. So the visual feedback that the participants per, uh, were receiving suggested that they were moving further. For instance, when I'm moving my head to the right, uh, I might be over here, but the visual feedback that they received while doing this movement suggested that they were already here. In the green condition, uh, the visual feedback underestimated the actual head rotation movements. And what I saw is that, again, vision was really dominant in uh, eliciting pain during uh, cervical movements because patients uh, were uh, able to move their head less while act when they had a visual input that uh, uh, overestimated their head rotation. So for instance, when they were uh, only uh, over here, but the visual input suggested that they were already here, then they were able to move their head uh, um, less far. And of course, that, that was related to the fact that they felt pain much earlier. On the other hand, when the vision underestimated their head rotation, then they were able to move their head further and felt pain uh, later on in the head movement. So again, this shows the dominant input of visual input uh, when you compare it to other sensory inputs, because of course those people were clearly also receiving a lot of proprioceptive inputs, but vision uh, clearly was more dominant in uh, uh, informing the brain than proprioceptive input. This is also an intriguing question. Are blind people more or less sensitive to pain or is there no difference in terms of pain sensitivity between blind people and people with normal vision? Well, people who were born blindly, they affect are more sensitive to painful stimuli as compared to people with normal vision. And when you, have, when you deprive people with normal vision from their vision for a long time period, then they also develop more sensitivity to pain. There is no typo on the slide. This was, in fact, a study published in 1964. So it's a very old study. But when you combine these results, they actually do make sense because vision protects us from danger. It's a way to protect us from all the danger that is surrounding us. And if you no longer are able to use that sensory system, then other sensory systems uh, must adapt to protect you from the dangers that we are faced with during uh, everyday life. So the sensory systems uh, become more sensitive when uh, other sensory systems are no longer functioning properly. This makes, uh, made us think, well, perhaps we can use visual feedback as a way to actually manipulate pain experimentally. And this is, uh, has been done by uh, many others. For instance, work done by Benedict Wand showed us that visual feedback during body movements actually inhibited pain in people with chronic low back pain, which provides, of course, uh, exciting new avenues for providing exercise interventions. Previous work has already shown that healthy people 
can actually also inhibit pain by using visual feedback. And this appears to be a local effect. So the visual feedback needs to be given on the location where uh, the pain inhibiting effect is uh, experienced. So this made us think, well, let's try this in patients with a very severe pain disorder like chronic pain following ripless injury. And this is set up in a study that we have done using a camera providing visual feedback from the cervical region. And as you can see, the participants uh, are watching this computer screen and on the computer screen, they receive the visual feedback from their cervical region not only in a static position, but also during head movements. We also manipulated the visual feedback, and this is what we found. Unfortunately, uh, visual feedback did not inhibit pain in whiplash patient, but it actually did in healthy people. So the setup was com um, confirming previous findings in a way that in healthy people, you get a local effect. So not in the leg, but only in the neck region, you get a, a decrease in pain sensitivity because the pain thresholds go up when they are uh, receiving visual feedback from that cervical region but unfortunately we didn't saw that in the chronic whiplash patients so there was no change in neck pain thresholds or leg pain thresholds so this shows that visual feedback uh, should not be dismissed but it cannot be used for all chronic pain patients so the previous positive findings in people with chronic low back pain were not uh, uh, being extrapolated or being allowed to be extrapolated to people with chronic neck pain uh, of a traumatic origin. Those observations were somehow in line with what Lisbeth Tane has done years ago and she found out that visual feedback during upper limb movements actually does not inhibit pain in people having chronic pain following a ripplish injury but on the other hand it, it, it increased pain during upper limb movements. Again we provided visual feedback uh, from the upper limb movements. So does this actually provide opportunities for new type of exercise interventions? Well, we don't know for sure, but of course, as we mentioned, as we emphasized in chronic low back pain patients, you do see in pain inhibitory effects from visual feedback during a lumbar movement. So therefore, Sana Kadon is now nearly completing her study where she is providing visual feedback of the lower back and pelvic region to people with chronic low back pain, not only in a static position, but also during a uh, uh, during body movement. And of course, lumbar movement is the particular type of body movement that we're interested in here. But we don't have any results as yet, so uh, this is a work in progress. And if you want to find it out, uh, then uh, if you want to find out more about the Pain Emotion Group, you can check out our website and related social media. This lecture was prepared upon invitation and upon a request from Anatomy and Physiotherapy check out their website because they have some fascinating stories available for 